Coming up shortly, our own Casey Dickey with all the inside news from the streets of Melbourne. But before that, we head down to the State Library to hear from our Melburnians as to how they think Australia should look and what sorts of big issues Kevin Rudd should address post the big summit in Canberra. I think uh, urban design, public transport uh, needs uh, a fairly radical overhaul in this country. Whole country, far too reliant upon, upon trucks for moving goods from here to there. Makes no sense in a country this size. Incredibly expensive, spend so much money maintaining roads and infrastructure. Should be, uh, should be a large push to get back, onto, uh, get back onto rail. If more people supported young people and listened to them, I think that would be a really good idea um, because a lot of the time an adult listens but you don't really hear or you don't you just think oh they're only young what would they know but they've got a lot you know for every age in your life you've got something relevant to say about that particular period of time. It's very good uh, to be in Australia at the moment because uh, uh, having reached accessible to most of the places and getting getting better day by day. The, the opinion of the Australians are uh, for the for the accessibility for the people like us is very good. Uh, the attitude to make it uh, into a better place for the people like us, I really appreciate that. But not many countries uh, think in that way. I don't think like assimilation is a good idea, but I think we should have something like if people are coming here, rather than just forming their own like little communities and stuff, it'd like be a good idea for them to um, maybe they have some kind of program where like we can integrate them better, like, like because like people come here to get a, not to get away from their own cultures, and so it's fine if they're um, if they're like sticking together and stuff. But I think they need to have like an Australian sort of way of life, you know. I do think that um, we're, you're heading in the right direction, a more open policy towards um, immigration. Um, but at the same time, also maybe uh, better sort of integration policies. Sometimes, you know, in the citizenship test, you need to know things that even um, Australians don't know. So that doesn't seem quite fair to me. But otherwise, um, just to make sort of the, the process a little smoother, not so much red tape. I would suggest that maybe mental health be given a lot more of a priority. Like it leads to so many other things, for example, like, um, like smoking or whatever, and cardiovascular disease are the biggest killers sort of in the country. But they have their root in um, sort of psychological disorders or a psychological deficit, you know, and so to treat the um, to treat the illness at the back end of it might be a lot smarter than trying to treat it when it's right there and someone's on their deathbed, you know, in the hospital using up resources. Treating them, the Aborigines as equals. I've worked with Aborigine men in far north Queensland. They're strong, tough guys, really nice people, um, proud. Great workers, education, that's key to it, for sure. Um, something to do, I hope all this money they're making off mining, they'll um, channel it back to their children. Um, it's really hard, we, we, we absolutely kick the shit out of them. It's gonna take a few generations before they uh, get some self-esteem and pride as a race. Get rid of all the people and give it back to the animals. I think it's the best thing that could ever happen. Then we'll get the water cleaner, we'll get the air cleaner, we'll have no pollution, and the place would be livable for the animals. Something a bit more positive about the, uh, the carbon issue. You know, I think we could go as far as having personal carbon trading as much as the, uh, for the corporate sector, so that you and I have to limit how much carbon we use. Less emphasis on, you know, throwing money around at bloody sport and what sort of... Huh? <laughs> really? There is a need of like investment in any kind of sport because it motivates people to come into the sports and participate and all that. Yeah. It shouldn't be like going all the money up there and, and just in cricket or in football or like whatever sport. There should be some limits. I've been around a long time. I've, I've seen uh, Labor coming in and rejuvenating and sparking great new ideas. I hope this time it will actually achieve something and makes Australia a better place. Thanks, Phil. There are outstanding industrial grievances at Boeing subsidiary Hawker de Havilland. The legal facts of the Boeing dispute are as follows. On Monday the 7th of April, the AIRC issued a recommendation that employees attend work as per their rostered shifts. On Tuesday the 8th of April, the AIRC issued an order to employees not to engage or threaten to engage in industrial action. 
On Thursday the 10th of April, an application was made by the company against the employees and also against the AMWU to the Federal Court for an injunction hearing. Details included in the application were, in summary, for the employees and the AMWU to be restrained from engaging in, organising, procuring or encouraging industrial action before the expiry of the current collective agreement, for compensation to be paid to the company and for penalties to be imposed. Friday the 11th and Monday the 14th of April saw that hearing take place. I had a look at the transcripts online and in summary it backed up the previous order from the Commission, so it was basically an order for the employees to return to work and for the union to advise the members that they return to work and to advise that their current refusal not to is not authorised or encouraged by the AMWU. The trial is to take place on, at 10am on May the 7th. We spoke with Boeing's media representative Ken Morton regarding the case. He said that Boeing has followed every step of the agreed procedures regarding dismissals. They are alleging that the union led the workers out on strike. Their prime concern is to get employees back to work. Boeing has issued proceedings against the employees' contempt of court, and Boeing is currently reserving its position regarding suing for damages. Boeing has communicated to its employees that any employee who returns to work and stays at work for the life of the current collective agreement will have all legal proceedings dropped. In other news, 300 workers at Fisher & Paykel in Brisbane were told last week that their jobs were going offshore to Thailand. It came as a complete surprise to their union who had no idea that this was even on the table. Note this one down in your diaries. Anyone who helped out at the waterfront dispute 10 years ago is invited to come along to the MUA rooms on Friday the 9th of May at 6.30pm to swap war stories.